Okay, would you open up your Bibles to Matthew chapter 25, 31 to 46. Matthew 25, we're going to read 31 to 46. <clears throat> Let's bow in prayer before we start. Holy Father, we come before you right now and we give you praise and honor for our Lord Jesus Christ. Many are called, but few are chosen. Father, we thank you for having mercy on us and revealing your son unto us, Father, that we might uh, preach Christ and be a faithful witness on this earth. Again, Father, Thou dost know those who are yours. Again, we thank you for your goodness and mercy. And as the word goes out, Father, we pray that you bless it to our hearts. We thank you for all that are listening, Father, that we may all grow in grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> okay, Matthew 25, 31. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him then sh then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory and before him shall be gathered all nations and he shall separate them one from another as a, sh a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats he shall set the sheep on his right hand but the goats on the left then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and ye gave me meat. I was thirsty, ye gave me drink. I was a stranger, ye took me in. Naked, and ye clothed me. I was sick, and ye visited me. I was in prison, and ye came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee hungry, and fed thee, and thirsty, and gave thee drink? And when saw thee a stranger, and took thee in, or naked, and clothed thee? <clears throat> and when saw we thee sick, or in prison, and came unto thee? And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, inasmuch as ye have done it unto the least of these my brethren, ye have done it unto me. Then shall he say unto the, them that on the left hand, depart from me, ye cursed into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and ye gave me no meat. I was thirsty, ye gave me no drink. I was a stranger, you took me not in. Naked, and you clothed me not. Sick, and in prison, and you visited me not. Then shall they also answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee a hungred, hungred, or a thirst, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister unto thee? Then shall he answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you, inasmuch as you did it not to the one of the least of these, you did it not to me. And these shall go away to, uh, un, into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. Okay. Uh, we're continuing our study in Revelation. So let's go over to Revelation chapter 3. And we just finished our uh, our first Kings three study, and uh, <clears throat> we were on that for a couple of weeks or so, and then um, and we took a little detour. But now we're back in uh, Revelation, and we come up to verse sixteen. Um, but remember, as he says in fifteen, I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot i would that i uh, would thou were cold or hot see and so um uh 
he's saying in the next verse, these people are lukewarm. And so remember, these seven churches are all pictures uh, of what to expect the churches throughout the land uh, to, <clears throat> to be like. Uh, they're going to leave their first love. They're going to go after false doctrine. Uh, the teachings of Jezebel, which are false teachings, um, uh, the teachings, that, the doctrines of Balaam, that we already covered all this, see? And so <clears throat> um, they've, they've, uh, they've gone after uh, false gospels, false doctrine, see? And now um, he's saying in verse 16, so then because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth, see? And so, um, and we see this word uh, lukewarm, it means uh, too warm, uh, half-hearted, uninterested, see? This is, this would be the condition of, of the, uh, the churches, the religious people in the churches. They would be lukewarm because they have gone after uh, um, uh, diff, uh, false gospels, say, and so they're um, they they're mixing cold and hot together, and and yet these people aren't saved. So what you have is lukewarm, see. And um, let me just show you uh, some things that regard uh, regarding this. Uh, first, uh, let's go to Numbers. Chapter 32, 11 and 12. <clears throat> Numbers 32, 11 and 12. Surely none of the men that came up out of Egypt from 20 years old and upward shall see the land which I swear unto Abraham and unto Isaac and unto Jacob, because they have not wholly defiled me, say, save Caleb, the son of Jethian, the king in Nezite, and Joshua, the son of Nun, for they have wholly followed the Lord, say. That word holy uh, would be fully, fully followed the Lord, say. Uh, another one is in uh, Numbers 14. See, these, uh, so when you're not following the Lord fully, then that person's lukewarm. Um, look at uh, Numbers 14, 21 through 24 there. But as true as I live, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord. Because all those men which have seen my glory and my miracles, which I did in Egypt and in the wilderness, and have tempted me now these ten times, and have not hearkened to my voice, surely they shall not see the land, which I swear unto their fathers. Neither shall any of them that provoke me uh, see it. Say, But my servant Caleb, because he had another spirit, in other words, the Holy Spirit was in Caleb and uh, another spirit with him and had followed me fully, say, him will I bring into the land whereunto he went and his seed shall possess it. So the others were lukewarm, see, they didn't follow the Lord fully. And of course, they didn't have the Holy Spirit in them. And if you don't have the Holy Spirit in you, in you you're not going to follow the Lord fully. And then uh, if you go over to um, uh, verse 37 and 38, Numbers, it, it says there, um, uh, even those men uh, did bring up the evil report upon the land, died by the plague before the Lord. But Joshua, the son of Nun, and Caleb, the son of Jithnium, which were uh, 
of the men that went to search the land lived still see so god plagued those others that were lukewarm but he kept alive joshua and caleb see so um the point is is that they followed the lord fully it says it right there in verse 24 caleb had another spirit in him which is the spirit of god the holy and had followed me fully say <clears throat> so the other ones didn't except caleb and joshua say and so um these people here and back in revelation uh they're reli they're religious but they're not following the lord fully say either they're uh, uh following in a false gospel or they're half-heartedly following the lord uh which would be lukewarm say go to james i want to read james uh chapter one look at verse 21 there through 27. <clears throat> okay let's start with verse 1 uh 21 james 1 21 wherefore lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls but be ye doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving yourselves so the hearers would be the lukewarm say for if any man be a hearer of the word and not a doer he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass or you can say a mirror mirror and he beholding himself and goeth his way and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was say but whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein he being not a forgetful hearer but a doer of the work this man shall be blessed in his deed if any man among you seem to be religious and bridleth not his tongue but deceiveth his own heart this man's religion is vain pure religion and undefiled before god and the father is to is this to visit the fatherless and the widow which are pictures of believers in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world Sorry. and so um if if uh, uh when we when we serve the lord it's all week long and so you ask yourself how do you live monday tuesday wednesday thursday and friday saturday uh how do you live during those days are are, are, are you fleshly during those days uh, very little bible reading um very little prayer uh, then something's wrong spiritually say and and so uh the Lord says, give us this day our daily bread. We're to be in the word every day, praying every day. Uh, we worship the Lord every day, okay? And so it's a, it's to be lukewarm is a terrible thing because the next part of it, it's uh, going back to Revelation 3. He says, because thou art lukewarm uh, and neither cold nor hot, I'll spew thee out of my mouth, see? And that word um, spew, it means um, to vomit in, in, uh, in the Greek. It means to vomit, see? You're not in the kingdom of God. You're not in Christ, okay? God will take everyone that's lukewarm and vomit them out. And, and uh, um, a lot of times, uh, when we vomit, there's something in our in the body there that needs to, uh, some type of uh, germ or whatever that that the Lord uh, has designed for the body to to eject it, and and so um, somebody that's in their sins and not saved and is lukewarm, 
uh, would be similar to a, a picture of that, say, and the Lord will spew that person out of his mouth so they're no longer, they're outside the kingdom of God, say. Uh, <clears throat> and so um, the Lord wants us to be hot. Remember the uh, what we looked at in 1 Kings 3, that woman who was the living child, uh, remember her heart yearned, it says, it was hot for that child. And that's a picture of believers. So um, let's go to Leviticus. I want to show you how God uses this word spew. Look at Leviticus 18, 24 through 29. Leviticus 18, 24 through 29. <clears throat> defile not your defile not ye yourselves in any of these things, for in all these these the nations are defiled, which I cast out before you. And the land is defiled. Therefore, I do visit the iniquity thereof upon it. And the land itself vomiteth it out of her inhabitants. And ye shall therefore keep my statutes and my judgments and shall not commit any of these abominations, neither any of, of your own nation, nor any stranger that sojourneth among you. For all these abominations have the men of the land done, which were before you, and the land is defiled. And the land, and that land spew not you out also when you defile it, as it spewed out the nations that were before you. For whosoever shall commit any of these abominations, even the soul that committeth them shall be cut off from among the, their people. Therefore shall you keep my ordinance that ye commit it, and that ye commit not any one of these abominable customs which were committed before you, and you defile not yourselves therein. I am the Lord your God. Say. So you work with the spiritual teaching, uh, those that uh, um, are defiled with the false gods and so forth of, of the lands or the, of this world, the, God, the false gods of this world, uh, the Lord will spew you out, see. Uh, the land shall spew not, that the land spew you not out also in verse 28, when you defile it, see. In other words, <clears throat> when we're in God's kingdom, uh, uh, we're to be uh, hot for the Lord, serving the Lord, uh, that those are the elect see those are the elect but the the rest the external church you see they're going to be uh they're lukewarm and they're um they're not going to uh are they're not in the kingdom of god see and uh they're they're vomited out and so i want to show you an example of how some people uh, in the Bible were half-heartedly and, and, and to see what happened to those people. Go to Acts chapter uh, 4. I want to show you a contrast here. There was a man named Barnabas who was uh, a, 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 a child of God. And uh, look at verse 4, chapter 4, 36 and 37. And Josie's who by the apostles was surnamed Barnabas, which is being interpreted the son of consolation, a Levite, and of the country of Cyprus, having land, sold it and brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. So, so he brought the, the whole uh, sum uh, of money and laid it at the apostles' feet, which is a picture of really full, uh, fully serving the Lord, see, and not half-heartedly. And now here in, in chapter 5, we're going to see 
Ananias and Sapphira, what happened to them. Uh, now, uh, so here's the contrast. But a certain man named Anan, Ananias and Sapphira, his wife, sold the possession and kept back part of the price, his wife also being privily, privy to it and brought a certain part and laid it at the at the apostles feet see see that see what's being developed barnabas brought everything and it's like giving your life to christ and and serving him wholeheartedly and 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 here ananias uh kept back see half-hearted and serving the lord so look let's see what happens to him and his wife and uh and verse three and peter said ananias why hath satan filled thy heart to lie to the holy ghost and to keep back part of the price of the land while it remained was it not thy own and after it was sold was it not in thy own power why hast thou conceived this thing in thy heart that was not light to unto men but unto god and ananias hearing these words fell down and gave up the ghost and great fear came on all them that heard these things and the young men arose and wound him up and count and carried him out and buried him and it was about the space of three hours after when his wife not knowing what was done came in and P and peter answered unto her tell me whether you sold the land for so much and she said yea for so much then peter said unto her how is it that ye have agreed together to tempt the spirit of the lord behold the feet of them which have buried thy husband are at the door and shall carry thee out then she fell down straightway at his feet and yielded up the ghost and the young men came in and found her dead and carrying her forth buried her by her husband and great fear came upon all the church and upon as many as heard these things say so you see that the result of serving the lord half-heartedly is death but of course you we know it's the second death the lake of fire uh, we each have to die physically but when you look at the spiritual teaching of these things that uh it's it's eternal damnation it's second death say and so you have a contrast here barnabas uh would be a picture of those uh of god's elect that serve the lord fervently with their whole heart and ananias and sapphira would be those that would serve him half-heartedly see and remember that word lukewarm it means to warm half-hearted uninterested see and so um like i says it's one thing hearing the word on the lord's day but what about monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday saturday uh what how do you live during those days and uh or do you live uh um lukewarm or do you live hot for the lord say and so the lord give you wisdom and and uh, uh ask for uh wisdom and repentance if that's the case the lord have mercy on it you could see what the result is for anybody that it goes right with the old testament remember the lord plagued them that that uh didn't serve him fully and here same thing ananias kept back part of the land and his wife and they died okay so the lord uh uh wants us to serve him with the whole heart okay that's just the nature of a child of god when we're born again when we're a new creature go to psalms 119 i mean it doesn't take long to to just see how often God uses a whole heart. I mean, it's you read Psalms 119 and and it's uh, there's a lot of verses in this chapter. Um, just follow me for a moment. Look at verse um, two. 
Blessed are they that keep his testimonies and that seek him with a whole heart. Look at verse 10. With my whole heart have I sought thee. Oh, let me not wander from thy commandments. Okay. Look at verse um, 58. I entreated thy favor with my whole heart. Be merciful uh, unto me according to thy word. Okay. Look at verse um, uh, 69. <clears throat> uh, the, the proud have forged a lie against me, but I will keep thy precepts with my whole heart. So many verses as we go through this chapter, it's the idea is to serve the Lord with the whole heart. See? And, and not half-heartedly because uh, you know the result of that. You're, you're outside the kingdom of God, and of course, God's wrath is upon uh, that person, okay? <clears throat> you could see what I just read with Ananias and Sapphira, and the, and the contrast is Barnabas, who, <clears throat> who, served the, who served the Lord fully, say, and Barnabas uh, was a child of God, and <clears throat> let's see if I could find the... Um, I could find the verse where it says that um, uh, he, he um, okay, go over to Acts chapter uh, 11. Look at verse 22 there, Acts 11. Then tidings of these things came unto the ears of the church was that in, was in Jerusalem, and they sent forth Barnabas, that he should go as far as Antioch, who when he came and had seen the grace of God was glad and exhorted them all that with purpose of heart they would cleave unto the Lord. For he was a good man and full of the Holy Ghost. See that? He served the Lord fully, just like Caleb. He had, uh, Caleb had another spirit. So full of the Holy Ghost and of faith and much people was added unto the Lord, okay? So Barnabas was one of God's elect, okay? So remember, lukewarm, it means uh, half-hearted, uninterested. You really aren't interested about the things of the Lord, say. And, uh, um, and so that's, that's an indication that person's lukewarm, say. Uh, not very interested. Or, um, you remember being cold, uh, people have no interest at all uh, that are, uh, that are uh, you see today, um, whatever they're doing, they don't care about fellowship. They don't care about uh, opening up their Bible. They never read their Bible. They don't pray when they eat. Everything is about themselves and about the pleasures in this life. And, and uh, so they're cold, see, they're cold to God. But we that are hot for the Lord and fervent, we're, we're here listening to the word and uh, we wanna grow in grace and knowledge and, and we wanna praise our Lord Jesus Christ, say. And so um, this is why I say, um, take it to Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, uh, not just today, uh, those that are his serve him every day of the week, okay? That's just the way it is when, when we're a child of God. We love our Lord Jesus, and we're with him every day. Say, Okay, so let's go into the next verse. And it says, um, um, now he says, Because thou sayest, I am rich and increase with goods and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched, and miserable, and poor, and blind, and naked. See? So remember, these are people in the Laodicean church, which are pictures of what to expect in the churches during the Great Tribulation period. See? Each one of these churches gives us insight uh, what to expect. Uh, they're leaving their first love. They're going after false doctrine. 
uh, Satan is dwelling there. It even says it, uh, look at chapter 2 of Revelation. Look at verse 13. I know thy works and, and where thou dwellest, even where Satan's seed is. See? And thou holdest fast my name and has not denied my faith, even in, in those days where an Antipas, my faithful martyr, was with slain among you, where Satan dwelleth. See? And so this is the nature of the great tribulation that uh, right before the end that Satan is loosed and not only working in the hearts of unsaved people and we see the wickedness that goes on out there in the world, uh, Satan's wickedness working in that person. Uh, and he also takes his seat in the churches. And that's why we have this type of language that the Lord puts here, even where Satan's seat is. And so, uh, remember, you got to, these churches are pictures and types of what to expect during the Great Tribulation. Okay. And so, and not only that, but the churches are dead. Look at chapter three, look at verse one. Rev, and and uh, Revelation 3 1. And unto the angel of the church of Sardis write, these things said he that had the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know thy works, that thou has a name, that thou livest, and art dead. See? And so uh, these churches, they'll say that they're Christians or they're children of God. And uh, just like this Laodicean church, they're lukewarm. And, and they're saying, I am rich and increase with goods and have need of nothing. And, know, and, and the Lord's saying, and knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable poor blind and naked okay and so uh let's look uh, into this language here first of all uh when it says there um because i'll say is i am rich and incre increased with goods um now spiritually well the greek word means wealthy abounding with and uh, it's they're really saying that they're rich in christ that they're saved, spiritually speaking, see? And uh, um, as it says there, it says, I am rich and increased with goods. So both of these words are really similar, rich and increased with goods in the Greek. Uh, one means to become wealthy or rich. It's the same teaching as saying, I am rich. I want us to go to uh, Luke 12, look at 20 and 21. Luke 12. <clears throat> We're to be rich in Christ. Or, that's true. But these people, they're saying that, but they're not. Because the Lord says right there that they're rich and blind. So, okay, look at Luke 12, 20 and 21. Um, but God said unto him, thou fool, this night thy soul shall be quired of thee. Then though, then who shall those things be which thou hast provided? So is he that layeth up his treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. Say, and then uh, go to Second Corinthians eight. Look at verse nine. Second Corinthians eight and nine. <clears throat> for you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, which is going to the cross, uh, for your sakes he became poor, that ye through his poverty might be rich. See? And so rich in faith, rich in, in, in God. Um, last one is in 1 Timothy 6.18. 1 Timothy 6.18. You know, most of the people, um, let me read this first. Thing. They that do good, uh, 1 Timothy 6.18, that they do good, that they be rich in good works, ready to distribute, willing to communicate. Okay? 
that's bringing the gospel, ready to distribute, willing to communicate the gospel, to spread the gospel. Okay, now go over to John 8. Most people in the churches, of course, they're going to say they're saved or they're Christians. Uh, it's easy to say those things. Uh, but another, uh, what do they believe and, and how do they live? Say, but um, uh, look at look at how the uh, look what the Jews in John eight. Look at John eight. Let's start with uh, um, verse um, thirty nine. John eight thirty nine. Then answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. They, they answered and said unto him, these Jews, these unbelieving Jews, uh, Abraham is our father. And Jesus said unto them, if you were Abraham's children, you would do the works of Abraham. But now you seek to kill me, a man that hath told you the truth, which I have heard of God. This did not Abraham. Ye do the deeds of your father. Then they said to him, we are, uh, we be not born of fornication. We have one father, even God. Say. So they're saying that they're children of God. And yet they're, they don't believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. They're not born again. And Jesus said unto them, if God were your father, you would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I myself, but he sent me. Why do you not understand my speech, even because you cannot hear my word? Ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is, the li he is a liar and the father of it. Say. So the Lord tells them who, the, who their father is right there in verse 44. But but up there in verse 41, they're saying we have one father, even God. So it's no different today. Some of these people uh, will tell you they're Christians or they're children of God. Uh, they did it back then. And so uh, the Lord said to them, you are of your father, the devil. Say. So if you have another gospel uh, and you're not serving the Lord uh, and truth, then you're lukewarm. You're like you're like this Laodicean church, say, and and uh, and they're saying uh, because thou sayest I am rich and increase with goods, see, they're saying they're rich in Christ spiritually speaking, and that the uh, they're increased with goods and have need of nothing, see, and and in other words, they think they're saved, uh, uh, that God supplies all their needs and so forth which to the true believer he does look at psalms 23 and, and look at verse 1 psalms 23 look at verse 1 there <clears throat> the lord is my shepherd i shall not want see because he supplies everything we need for salvation and one last one there is in philippians Look at Philippians 4.19. Philippians 4 and verse 19. <clears throat> but I have uh, 19. But of my but my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. So going back to Revelation there, uh, 17. 317, because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods. Uh, they think they have good standing with the Lord, and uh, but they're lukewarm, see, and and um, uh, and have uh, need of nothing, see. And the Lord says to them, uh, and know us not, see. They don't know that they're in this spiritual condition. Say and knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. Now this word wretched 
uh, in the Greek, it means uh, miserable. See, it means miserable. And um, um, and when it's when he says uh, and have need of nothing and knowest not that word knowest it means to understand. So they don't understand because uh, they de they're deceiving themselves. Say eh? they think they're following a true gospel, and uh, when you uh, talk to them about what they believe or uh, what they hold to. You could see it's not in line with the, with the scriptures, say, and so um, they don't understand that they're they're following after a false gospel. They're deceived, say, and so yet they're going to say uh, they're Christians. Now uh, here it says be, here it says because thou sayest I am rich and increase with goods, but in the other chapters. Um, Go to chapter two. Uh, look at look at the end of verse. Um, um, <clears throat> look at uh, verse two, two two. I know thy works, thy labor, and thy patience, and how thou canst not bear them which are evil, and thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not, and have found them liars. See, which say they are apostles. In other words, they're saying that they're followers of Christ. And they're not, it says it right there, and are not, and has found them liars, see? So they're going to call themselves believers, apostles, or followers of God, children of God. And then in verse 9, it says, uh, they say they're at the end of verse 9, it says, them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan, see? So uh, we already studied these things. Spiritually, we're Jews. We're one that's, uh, that is circumcised uh, by the heart. Remember in Romans, Romans 2, 28 and 29? So these people are saying they, they say they're, they're Christians by saying they're Jews, but they're not. They're in the synagogue of Satan. Say, Remember, figurative spiritual language that we have to work with that the Holy Spirit uh, reveals to us, okay? And so um, so the Lord's telling them, thou art wretched, which means um, miserable, see? And they're not saved. And, and then uh, the next one is miserable, uh, which in the Greek, it means pitiable, pitiable, despicable, see? That's what miserable means. It's used twice in the Bible right here and also in uh, uh, 1 Corinthians 15, this Greek word. Look at 1 Corinthians 15 and, and verse 19. 1 Corinthians 15, look at verse 19. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are all men most miserable. That's that's the second time it's used there. See, see, we don't we hope in Christ and eternal life. See, that's why it says, if in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are all men most miserable. We have hope of eternal life. See, and so go back to Revelation, and uh, uh, and he and he's given us. Um, all these these spiritual these words that point to the condition of unsaved mankind they're wretched they're miserable they're poor they're blind and they're naked this word poor it means distressed uh i want to show you in luke 14 look at verse 13 look at luke look at luke 14 and verse 13 <clears throat> but when thou makest a feast, call the poor. See, these are these are unsaved people. It's bringing the unsaved to Christ to the to the feast of the gospel. Call the poor, the maimed, the lame the blind 
and thou shalt be blessed, for they cannot recompense thee, for thou shalt be recompensed at the resurrection of the just. And so um, it's a picture of bringing the gospel to the lost, who God says there, they're poor and maimed and lame and blind. And then when we become saved, and then we're rich in God and, and rich in good work, rich in faith, say. Uh, but before that, uh, it says we're in our sins and uh, we don't have that relationship with the Lord. Um, I'm just going to do one or two more and that should do it. Uh, the next one is blind, uh, spiritually blinded, say. Uh, this is the condition, again, of unsaved people. Uh, you're blind from birth. Uh, I just want to take a minute and go to John chapter 9. When you read these, these miracles that Jesus did, it's teaching the spiritual condition of us before we're saved. And, and uh, you know, how can we heal our blind eyes ourselves? How can we do anything? Uh, we're spiritually blind. We're spiritually dead. How can we, we do anything when we're in that condition? Okay. And so look at chapter 9, uh, verse 1. And as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. And that's the condition that we're in. Right from the womb, we go away speaking lies. Psalms 58. Three, it'll say these things. Eh? But that's the, the condition of man. Right from birth, we're blind spiritually. See? And, his, and his disciples said on. Uh, unto him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that uh, he was born blind? And Jesus answered, Neither had this man sinned nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. Say, uh, I must work the works of him that sent me while it, it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. And when he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground. Uh, now, spiritually, to spit or the spat is a picture of a curse. And the ground is a picture of mankind. Mankind is under a curse. See? Because you're going to see he's still blind at this point. And the, he made clay of the spittle, and he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay, see? But he's still blind. And this is because man is under the curse of God. They're spiritually blinded. So that would be the teaching there. Uh, when, when you read this, you, and you say, well, what would that mean spiritually? Well, that's what it means. Spitting or spat is a curse. Remember, they, they did that to Christ when he hung on the cross. They spat on him. And Jesus was made a curse for us, it says. And of course, the Bible says we're made out of the dust of the ground. So uh, to spiritually, uh, this language would mean that man is under the curse of God. So he made clay of the spittle. And he anointed the eyes of the blind men with the clay. Now, verse 7, we're going to see salvation. And he said unto him, go wash in the pool of Siloam, which is by interpretation sent. And he went his way, therefore, and washed and came seeing. See? So that pool would be the gospel. See, uh, it would be the gospel that were washed in the washing of the water of the word it says in ephesians see? and so now we have salvation before we're under a curse we're blinded from birth say that's just the nature before you and i are saved and you know uh, we can't do anything in this situation god has to come to us and he has to uh, wash us with the gospel, the water of the word, and we 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 uh, come seeing, okay, and that's just the way 
it is when we're saved. God does the work. That's why he said in verse, um, uh, let's see, where does it say that? Verse three, uh, Jesus answered, nay, had this man sinned nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him, see? So the Holy Spirit comes into us it's as the washing of the water, and now our spiritual eyes are open. And now we see and we follow the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay. And so um, uh, I, I pray that every one of us listening is following the Lord fervent, not lukewarm, and that uh, uh, we serve the Lord uh, all week long uh, with a whole heart. Okay. That's the nature of a child of God, uh, those that are fervent in spirit serving the Lord. So next week, Lord willing, we'll look at this, this last, this word naked. And of course, it goes, it's right in line with uh, what does it mean for being spiritually naked? And we'll look at that and so forth. Lord willing.